Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's show. Great to have you back with us. Grant tells me that the uh, first two shows we did have uh, really hit it out of the park in well, terms of well, viewership we, and listenership. We had the, the world-renowned, our favorite congresswoman commenting each time. I tell you. Thank you, Ileana ross Leighton, for... Uh, Bringing us into your home. I know that there are many embarrassing things in your life, just like mine, but we may be the most <laughs> embarrassing. Well, I'm speaking mostly for Grant, but, uh, you know, you, I was just on the phone with one of our you great look past you look chairs. You look dashing today. Oh, dashing. Pink is your color. Well, pink is sort of my natural skin tone. So I was just worried that my it wouldn't look like my head had popped out or you could see my neck because I'm, I'm very pink. I'm from Ohio. It's sort of my skin tone. So, Ohio, name the only president to win a presidency and not get Ohio. And not get Ohio? Yes. Donald Trump, the first to go around. You have, no. to, you have to win Ohio to be the president. And Hillary Clinton won Ohio, you're saying. Right. In 2016. Well, Ohio, first of all, is the state of presidents. I think eight different presidents. But they weren't born in Ohio. Most... No, no, a lot of them. I think you have to have been born. So I was just in Ohio. For what? About a week and a half ago. I went up there for July 4th to... Uh, Visit who? Just to go on a road trip and reconnect uh, who'd with you go my with? roots. I went with my friend Denise. Oh, that's right. Our, my friend. Your girlfriend. That and, I don't see at uh, the gym anymore. I think it's because you're not there. <laughs> that's she's, for sure. She's pretty dedicated. You can tell I'm getting a little hefty. Now, she is going through some physical therapy because of uh, some injury to her feet that happened during one of her marathons but oh uh, so you went to ohio you, we flew fireworks. to columbus fireworks were where well fireworks were the night before that's very ohio they want to do it the night before chicago because does it's that cheaper chicago does that oh, like they? so they did the red white and boom on the third so we flew up in the afternoon of the fourth got into columbus ohio the capital Got to our hotel. There were still some fireworks going on that night. And what else smaller. is o Columbus, Ohio known for? Besides having the Ohio State University there? Well, that is true. I was just making sure you What about Buckeyes, Buckeye Donuts? And how about Ohio is, I understand, the number one state for JUCO football. That's junior college football. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that. Young, Youngstown's there. They won a couple Youngstown of national titles. Youngstown is there right on the border. Won a couple of national Next titles. to... Uh, Next to Pennsylvania. Do you remember who the, the coach was? For who? For Youngstown no. State. No. It's how he got the Ohio State job, Jim Trestle. Really? Wow. He won several Division II titles. And when you at, fly into uh, Cincinnati, where do you fly into? Kentucky. I love that's, that. But that's so Ohio. Like, you know, Ohio is a lovely place to be from. I think people there are very Midwest, great values, kind patient. You were born there, huh? I was born in Toledo. So we flew to Columbus, check into our hotel, get out. So my friend Denise and I, we like um, kitsch. By, by the way, Denise is an athlete. If you people oh, know. yeah. She's also a veteran. and well, She was lady. in Army? She was in um, Coast Guard. Wow. So we get in there, we get the rental car, Columbus Airport's super nice. Columbus is nice, very clean. Right. Check into the hotel. And uh, we're like, all right, let's go, you know, get something to eat because it's probably like 830. And let's and of course, the town is asleep. Right. Because it is the 4th of July a holiday. And, you know, it's like 830. So we, we're, she and I, we like kitschy things. So the first thing we did was kitschy. go see the, uh, the Arnold Schwarzenegger statue. So we go, we take some pictures there. We go to a little taco restaurant that's across the... Uh, across the street and uh and then we make plans to get up you know pretty early so that we can go and you know see the state capitol go to ohio state drive around the campus we wanted to walk around uh ohio stadium the horseshoe so we walked around that whole thing we went to buckeye donuts so never heard of it so buckeye donuts um it's a great you know mom and pop donut shop but what they're known for are their buckeye donuts so it's a chocolate glazed donut and the little hole is filled with peanut butter because a buckeye oh. is chocolate peanut butter oh my peanut butter in there yeah it was peanut it's butter. like peanut butter and jelly sandwich okay question so and they had cronuts which i thought had kind of gone out of style but and the guy says to me you know we're, we're making them right now so 
if you come back in 30 minutes, I'll put two aside for you. So we drove a little around campus. We went to the bookstore, picked up some Ohio State Buckeye swag. So and we went back, and sure enough, they had set two aside for us. Because that's just what Ohioans do. They but love to share. Why is Ohio State football great? Is it mostly Ohio re- State of Ohio? I don't mean they don't win national titles, but they're always in yeah, the top in mix. The mix. Yeah, but why? Why are they always? In, is it a lot of Ohio athletes? Or yeah, is, it's I, you know coaching. I think coaching. there's a lot of good athletes that are in Ohio and in Pennsylvania and Michigan, and you know Ohio State competes well for them because they have great facilities. Who does? They have Ohio State. Yeah. They have great track record. They have won a bunch of titles. They've had coaches like, you know, Woody Hayes and John Cooper and Jim Trestle Didn't have and a great Earl ath- Bruce. What about ath- uh, track track athletes? They had some great ones. Well, Jesse Owens. Okay, was so an Ohio sure. State I just want to make sure. Track. Athlete. I watched that movie. I make sure there was. So that morning, we walk around the stadium. We eat our donuts. We go to the bookstore. We went to the Jesse Owens statue which is on campus. We went to the Jack Nicholas Museum. What, did he graduate? He went, yeah, he went to Ohio State. He won the Big Ten tournament before he won the amateur and before he won his first major. He's from Columbus, grew up there, married his wife, had started his family there. He's a Columbus boy. So we went to his uh, museum, which is on campus. And, you know, there's a statue of him there. We went and saw the uh, Woody Hayes statue. I took a picture with that. That's pretty wild. You remember Woody Hayes, right? So yeah, he, he pu- was He the, punched somebody out the last game. He did. He was, you know, in a long rivalry with Bo Schembechler at Michigan, back and forth. And, you know, nobody threw the ball then. It was three yards and a pile of dust. Like the Packers. But you're right. He was in the bowl game. His team got intercepted. And he punched the, the guy as he was running down the sideline. This guy was in his probably 70s. He punches the guy. Back then. They so, fired him. Yeah. Well, he quietly retired. Okay. But do you remember the school? No. Clemson. Okay. I, Clemson I have to ask you this question because you are a buff on I do not want to talk about Republicans or Democrats because you are a buff on this. How many of our presidents or our top-ranking officers was attempted suicide. The last, I mean, assassination. Oh, gosh. The last one was Reagan, right? Reagan would Not have been Reagan. the last sitting president. And who was that? Who stopped the bullet? Is it uh, Brady Law? Well, there was there were three other people shot. Four people were shot. They were at the, he was giving a speech to the Chamber of Commerce. And they left late morning out the back door of the Hilton, out, no cover, and as he went to get in the windshield, John Hinckley shot four bullets, hit four different people. They hit a police officer. They hit a Secret Service agent. They hit Jim Brady, his press Jim secretary. Brady. And they hit the president. So no, the president no. gets thrown into the back of the limo. They don't think he's injured. So, you know, the way it works in that protocol is back to the White House. They're speeding in the limo while the other three are being attended to. And all of a sudden, the president starts coughing, and he coughs up a, a very, very red blood. And right away, the Secret Service agent knew that he had some type of internal injury because that was highly oxygenated blood. And so he started putting his arm, you know, hands inside the president's suit coat, pulled it out, and it was bloody. Because he thought maybe he broke a rib when he jumped in. Right. On One of the bullets ricocheted off the door of the limousine. And basically, they didn't know into, that at the time. They didn't went into Reagan, just missed his uh, aorta. Wait, so and the, he was lucky to to survive it. But now there's a Brady Law. What is the Brady Law? Well, the Brady Law relates to gun control, but over the years it's been watered down. It's been diluted. It never went as far as Jim Brady and his wife hoped for, which was to deal with automatic rifles. But also, it had to deal a lot with, you know, John Hinckley had a mental illness. But he was able to obtain a gun. So they have addressed that in other bills. But okay. they, for the rest of you know his life, he worked on this issue because he was never the he same was a, again. He was in a wheelchair, right? He was. Okay. He so, had a basically a significant brain injury okay, so that was never healed. Before that, what other presidents or former presidents? So before that, 1960 was John F. Kennedy. Right. 
Before that, well, we had, Robert, Robert Kennedy, who was running for president, right? He was a candidate. Right. That was 1968, and of course, MLK Jr. Uh, 1940s, the president was not assassinated but died in office. That was FDR. 1920s, president did not die from gunshot, but was. Um, they thought he died of food poisoning. Which president? President Harding. There's a president that was six seven or seven foot. Who is that? Tyler. Seven foot. Yeah. No, Lincoln was the tallest president. Uh -uh. Six four. Hey, can you type in who? How tall was the president? Lincoln. Lincoln was six four. Can you type in who was the tallest president? Nineteen. Van Buren, I think. Nineteen hundred. Uh, president McKinley was shot uh, at the World's Fair. Six foot four, Abraham Lincoln. Did You're, I not just say that? You, Okay. Now, regarding Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. 1860. We don't, we don't... These are the years they were elected. Okay. So, let's back to Kennedy. Yeah. We don't know for sure, because the, the guy who shot him, supposedly shot him, was killed. Absolutely. Before he was ever tried. Right. And possibly even fully deposed. Correct. Yeah. So, we had that. We had Abe Lincoln. Yeah. Um, Same thing. They never had an opportunity to oh. interview John Wilkes Booth because he was killed while he was a fugitive. But I thought he was in, who went to prison? There were several co-conspirators and they also hanged four people. Yeah, but didn't somebody serve down at the prison? You're down? talking about Dr. Mudd. And who's Dr. Mudd? Dr. Mudd served at the Dry Tortugas. He was found guilty of conspiracy for helping set the, uh, the leg of Booth after he broke it. And how did he break it? Uh, jumping from the president's box down to the stage. The reason I'm quizzing him because he, is, you are a well-known Abe Lincoln guy. Well, there are many of us in town. David Lawrence, I think, is in Miami, probably the preeminent Lincoln file. I love, every time I see him, I go, Grant Miller, he goes, I know who you are. but I And he I, says it grouchy like that, like, which is so cute. Right. I mean, I just, out of respect, there's one person. Well, Dave is sharp as they come, so. Speak about sharp, Merritt Steerheim, sad day. Yeah. Merritt passed away uh, last Sunday, and, uh, you know, I, I knew that uh, he was in some difficult health because he is very close to my friend Billy Talbert. And, and Billy's been taking care of him for, he'd been yeah, with him for months. I, you know, I had breakfast with Bill once every other month at Sergio's. Of course, on Coral Way. On Coral Way, that's his place, and we get together, and he had told me Merritt had turned 90, but that he wasn't doing super well. And, you know, Judy was keeping, you know, a very watchful eye over him. But when he passed, it was not a shock because, you know, A, he'd lived an incredibly full 90, life. 90. He lived to be 90. Um, but, you know, I I always tell people, they're like, well, how did you know him? I said, you know, I didn't really know him. I knew of him because he had been, you know, our county manager. He'd been a city manager. He'd been our superintendent. And I certainly crossed paths with him. He was, he was him. Miami Lakes, internal. Doral. So, right. But a number of years ago, Tennis. I think it was 2009, our chamber hosted a candidates forum. And I reached out to him and I said, Merritt, you know, we know all these people in common. We've met a few times, but would you moderate the forum? And he said, yes. And he came and did a great job. And uh, I remember it was at the Hyatt Regency in the Gables. And, you know, again, a statesman who he doesn't know me really well. But we called him and asked him to help us out. You know, we're not paying him or, you know, even probably giving him a sandwich. But he said, I'd be glad to. And he did his homework on each of the candidates. No, his wife does the homework. She's the homework. The, the homework brain. was done. <laughs> she's she's the brain. Judy Cannon. So, so. I, you know, so I've known Merritt throughout the years. Yeah, yeah. So Pinecrest isn't trying to incorporate. And his job was to find a city manager, a village manager. So it was down to the top 15 Applicants. Oh, that's a lot of applicants. Well, the, so Chuck Rabin, I'll never forget, was just, the room was dinky. It was Chuck Rabin, somebody else from the Herald, me, me, and Merritt Steerheim. Chuck says, I'd like to see the list. Merritt Steerheim stood up and started yelling at him. You ain't getting this list. I am not ruining anybody's career. When I get to the top three, I'll show it to you. Chuck says, it's public information. Here's this guy, Merritt Steerheim, defending these people because he realizes the other – 12 people probably get fired if they knew. Well, and I'm sure it happened to him in his career. You know, even the whisper that somebody's talking to. Remember, Merritt left 
Miami and Steve Clark brought him back because he had gone over to Tampa, yeah. St. Pete area for a couple right. of years. So, you know, um, one of his ch grandchildren's called Merritt, Merritt Fay. Oh, nice. You know, he, uh, his, one of his daughters married the Fay family. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I saw them. Michael Fay, the yeah. realtor? The, oh. Yeah, the, the big dog. Yeah. I saw them. They had, the county had a little recognition, little. Yeah. This morning. Uh, they're, you know, it'll be bigger later, but uh, I'm sure it it's was the summer. It was beautiful, and Bill Talbert was there. And, you know, yeah, this, he, he was like, you know, Bill, I mean, he worked for Mr. Steerheim for how long? County. Go ahead, tennis, WTA. Remember that they left to go work for Chris Everett, Martina Navratilova. When were, the WTA they, was a brand new in Palm Beach. You were talking about a little organization. Apartment. And so they did that for a couple of years, and then they came back to run the CVB that had been created. CVB has been around forty plus years. Yeah, David Whitaker was there. It's just it was. They brought you know, David in. I think David, I think David was working at the United Way. Yeah. So at the time, people like Merritt Steerheim just. Well, first them. of all, three things I will are my observations. One, they'll never be uh, a manager type like that anymore because over time. There's been a delusion, you know, a dilution of the manager positions where, you know, some places have stronger mayors or commissions or councils. You know, secondly, you know, the management program that the county had was so incredible. And while Merritt, you know, didn't necessarily go through that, all of his best chiefs went through that, like George Burgess and, and Alina Hudak and people like that who trained in every single department for a couple of years and then, you know, got great jobs and then stayed because the whole idea of that program was that people weren't going into public service because they could make more money in the private sector or, you know, the headaches that come with that type of job. You know, I worked in the public for four years for Art Noriega when we were at the parking authority and I started as his director and then it was his deputy. And it's a totally different ball of wax, you know, when you have a government in the sunshine, when you are doing procurement the way you have to do it, um, when you're working for a board of five individuals, when you have to go to the city commission to get a rate increase or a bond issue or approve a board member. I mean, those were things that didn't happen in any other place that I had worked. But he, he... it was a really good learning experience. And the third thing I would just say is, you know, Merritt was a gentleman, and even on the most difficult day, you know, he could, he could raise his voice. Oh, but he, he was intimidating. He was right. He was right. Protecting people and their livelihoods. He's Judy, Miss Cannon, his wife, said he always wanted people that work with him to want his job. He wanted people to climb the corporate ladder. Yeah. To, to, and he helped I mean, them find great opportunities. Right. All those people. And they all became yeah. great never leaders. never be another, just like I tell Billy all the time, there'll never be another Bill Talbert. Just people don't have that level of passion and commitment Speak, to what they do in in the public sector. So I'm going to give a rarity. I'm gonna give a secret about Bill Talbert. Yeah. So one of the county commissioners says, points it, Billy, this is on the side. This is Today. Today. It was just Bill, me, and J.C. Bermudez, county commissioner. Said, sure. He is the top marketer of all. He points to Billy. He says, the day before my birthday, I get a birthday. I get, he said, not the day of, the day before. He says, it's just me and him. Every He, he, he says, brilliant marketing. So when you send a birthday note, send it the day before and say, hey, from Billy. But that was brilliant. He does that to everybody. Yeah, he... Um... He's just old school like that. I mean, I love having breakfast with him because he, first of all, he knows every bit of the tea that has been spilled in the county. He is as connected as he ever was. And I'm sure Merritt was, was like that until the end as well, because the two of them were very close. Um, you know, when they were all with us and, and, and more ambulatory, Bill, Merritt, and Capitan used to go. Who's Capitan? Um, Capitan was the head of Chemical. Okay. Oh, okay. What's his name? Now? Um, William, I'm going to forget his last name. Alexander. Okay. They would go once a month and have lunch at Captain's Tavern down, you know, yeah. Blue Hair. Candle. The Blue Hair Group. I love that. First of all, I love Captain's Tavern. Want to know why? Why? Free crackers. Ah, uh, salt, saltine. They put those crackers out and they are delicious. So, 
Um, Good afternoon, uh, George. Hey, we're finally seeing some commentary. Yeah, well, finally, Mark, uh, George is awake. Thank you very much. We have a great producer today. Hey, Alex. Uh, it's, Alex is you know, back when you, with when us. You he hear, used to do our show. He had bigger hair back then. Yeah, when you hear, think of merit, of all of the great things, you'll... Pinecrest, he lives at 124th Street and 67th, give or take. I'm not going to say exactly where. He was one of the heart and soul, you know, after Evelyn Greer and Gary Matzer, who's not doing real well. Mm -hmm. uh, they were the founders of it. And the guiding light was, yeah, yeah. was the guiding light. Merit Steerheim kept everybody in line how to do it, how to yeah. make it right. So hats off to Pinecrest. And uh, I remember working with Mayor Greer because, you know, her day job was in real estate. And uh, she had brought a great tenant many years ago to Coral Gables, uh, Shake Shack. Oh, the one on, uh, that was her property? The one on U.S. on her property. Had Did been she the still old hojo. I think she, I don't know if she still owns her property, but Shake Shack's still there. But she wanted me to meet Danny Meyer. And so really, to her credit, I mean, Danny Meyer is one of the preeminent restaurateurs in the world. And he had come to the grand opening, and I got to, uh, to meet him because of Mayor Greer. Uh, and obviously, you know, I worked with her when she was on the school board. You know, she was always... Um, so clear-minded, level-headed, and just did the right thing. And when you're in my role, whether it's the chamber or when you worked in government before, you want to work with people like that because that's who you are. You know, being from Ohio, you know, we come full circle. You're you're really taught at an early age about honesty and authenticity. And, and so when we were there for four or five days, my biggest takeaway is everybody says hello to you. They hold the door for you. They don't run you over in traffic. That's Nobody just, blows their horn. I didn't hear a single horn blown for four days. And we drove from Columbus through Amish country up to Canton. We went to the Hall of Fame. Is that your first? No. My be. first time. I'd never been there. You know, I'm from Ohio. Those heads of those football players are giant. It's They're giant. I took only one picture of all Don of the Shula. bus. I didn't take a picture but, of it. Who? Shula. What head? Emmett Smith. Well, that's your hero. That's my guy. Went to college with him. He's about um, a few months older than me. Took his picture. And um, so one of the things that is kind of crazy about the Hall of Fame is, first of all, those busts go back to what, like 1964. It's, I love that Hall of Fame. And they're Fame. already ready for the new eight. It's set up for the new eight that are going in because they already know who they are because they go in in August. So right. you've got... You know, people like Devin Hester, who's very connected to Florida, right. and and others. But I found Emmett's. I took a picture of it. But I will tell you, the coolest thing about the Hall of Fame is that everybody who's there comes with their kid or grandkid, almost always boys, and they're all in jerseys. And you, what do you think the most popular jersey was that I saw that day? Don't tell me Emmett Smith. No, no, it wasn't. It was it, it was the team, not so much the individual. Baltimore Colts. No. Who? The Eagles. All those Eagle fans are crazy. So many Eagles fans. And so we were walking in behind two kids, and both of them, they were maybe like four and eight, and they were both wearing uh, Jalen Hurts jerseys, which I thought was really cute. So one of my um, favorite movies is a Philadelphia Eagle movie. Who is it? Who started it? Uh, Mark Wahlberg. God, Come on, I love bro. that movie. I you love and it. I are practically married. If we yeah. lived together and didn't, and didn't just date each other, if we lived together, we'd watch that movie a lot. Oh, I cry on it. I still I cry on it. love that movie. And I love the Dick Vermeil character. That was so he's in the Hall of Fame. I saw his bus, Coach okay, Vermeil. Who, who played that role? Uh, it, it and his father me. and all the... Yeah, yeah, he's a great actor. He was in uh, another movie I really like. Someone will help us. If you're watching, hey, What's help the name of the movie out. again? Uh, Invincible. Invincible. See who starred in that movie and pop Sorry, it on Mark the screen. Wahlberg. Yeah. Mark and whoever Mark. played Dick Vermeil. So I see Coach Vermeil's bus, but the only picture I took, my friend Denise took a picture of a lot of the Dolphins guys. Shula. She took pictures, of course, of, uh, of you know. Uh, Lee Coso. Of uh, Marino. Oh, Greg Kinnear. Greg Kinnear. Oh, Lee, let me see who's uh, on there. Let but I'm going to tell you this, and I mean that no disrespect. But we went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland two days later. Thank you. Uh, to me, it's the best Hall of Fame I've ever been to. And it's right on the water. It's right on the water, and it's just amazing. More than amazing. I love music. I grew up with I music. I love music. I was taking piano lessons when I was five or six. My mother was the 
that my piano teacher, I started playing trumpet when I was in third or fourth grade. And I, I played music all the way through high school and, um, and fell in love with music. And in my house, we, you didn't, your sister. we didn't have records. And your brother. We didn't have records. You could listen to the clock radio in your room. You act like you had no money. No, it wasn't about money. You it had was chili, my you mother, had chili and hamburgers. My father wasn't big into music, but my mother only really listened to gospel music. So when, it, when I learned about Elvis Presley, it was because of his gospel music. When I learned about some of these other folks, if they had ever released like a gospel album, it's because of that. And people don't realize about Elvis. They didn't know that. That's how he started. Yes. Well, he sang in a lot of these singers of that era sang in the church choir. Dionne Warwick, Whitney Houston. But I would say, you know, six floors and every floor has a different theme and they have this wonderful tribute video. Uh, right now they're on the sixth floor. There is a special exhibit to Bon Jovi, which Denise, you know, she's a big Bon yeah. Jovi gal because, you know, New Jersey and, and everything. So you've been to the Baseball Hall of Fame? I've never been to Cooperstown. Maybe. But, you know, this trip, you know, it, it's low key. We fly, we drive. Denise did all the driving because she's she's in charge. Amazing. She's in and, charge. You know, she drives faster than I do. She's a little more aggressive. We did nearly kill a few people in Amish country because, you know, she'd come right up on their buggy. Really? It uh, makes me a little nervous. So I, I only screamed a couple times. Okay, let's get back to the Hall of Fame. It is, and then the, people don't realize the Hall of Fame football field. But it's up to it. It's right next door. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They'll have the induction there. And there were some families out there throwing a football around, which Beautiful. is cute. And well, that's what's going to happen when you go to base. But they've also built a whole little, like, retail area. So there were a lot of people who, when they wrapped up, we went pretty early because it opens at 9 or 10. We went at 10 o'clock as soon as it opened. Um, when you go to the Baseball Hall of Fame, when you do, yeah. right next door is the Double Day Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, listen, there was nothing on the trip that I would do differently, but there were some nice surprises. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, amazing. Um, seeing the Jack Nicholas Museum. So when I got back, I wrote a how note. Big, how big was the museum, Jack Nicholas? It's not super big. It takes you about an hour to go through. That's I funny. A gift shop. Um, when I got back, I wrote a note to our board member at the chamber who's at Nicholas Children's. And I said, listen. Uh, Nicholas is about to turn, I think, 75 years old, the hospital. There is nothing in Jack's Hall of Fame that talks about Nicholas Children's Hospital. I said, you guys should put together a little mini pop-up exhibit that celebrates their gift, he and Barbara, and celebrates the anniversary of the hospital. And she's like, okay. How's she doing? This was Perry Ann. Yeah, how's yeah, Perry? Yeah, she's doing great. Great. But nobody thought about it, and no one had been there. And I said, you know, they're major philanthropists. It isn't just Nicholas Children's. They've been involved in philanthropy since they were very young. I mean, they got married very young. I don't think he had finished at Ohio State. No, he has not. He was married um, for You know, when the time they got married. And then he won He won his last ma a major, which was a master's in 86, which was the year I graduated from high school. And I remember watching the finish with my dad on that Sunday. Because my dad, you know, couldn't believe that this guy who was, you know, already on the senior tour was going to win okay. his last major. Question. No. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you realized you're watching TV? What was the first? Oh, geez. No, I don't think so. Well, when I was growing up, we only had one TV. You know, we were a typical middle class family. It was in the living room. Later, my parents bought a little black and white TV How for the bedroom. I'm 56. They bought a little black and white TV, but you know, back then there were only three or four channels. You could kind of tune the UHF, yeah. but we were allowed to watch TV in their bedroom on the little black and white. What year was Kennedy? If it was available. What year was Kennedy killed? 63. So that means, in 69, I was in sixth grade. So what would I be in 63, first or second grade? Maybe. I remember. Where you were. See, I wasn't alive yet. But you know that today, is the anniversary of JFK Jr.'s death, 25 years already. Yeah, and yesterday was Merritt Steerheim's 50th or 45th anniversary, starting with the county or something like that. He'll talk I about. mean, it's amazing how these things synergize. But I think as you get older, you have a greater appreciation for dates, longevity, anniversaries, remembrances, things like that, and I think, versus when you're younger. I think we only had one TV 
maybe in my parents. It would be highly unusual. And, you know, it was not color yet. No, because I remember what room it was in. Yeah, I can see it. It was in my, it was in the living room. And, you know, it was pretty limited what we were allowed to to watch. <clears throat> One, we had a bedtime. Two, you know, my parents controlled it. There was an, uh, on Saturday morning, I could get up and watch cartoons. Cartoons. <laughs> and that was about it. But, you know, I was reminding my mother because I visited with her this weekend. Wait, wait, where? In, uh, in uh, Melbourne. So where you she went lives. two weeks ago in Ohio. Yeah. Is this on memory lane or something? You and mom? Well, you know, first of all, I didn't travel for 14 months because of my recovery. I like that recovery. So I want to go and do things that I wasn't doing before. So, you know, my mother, unfortunately, is dealing with, you know, some memory loss. So Does she remember who you are? She does remember who I am. Okay. That's important. She doesn't necessarily remember everything that's going on with me. That's which okay. is probably good because I'm not the best behaved child. Um, and we do have arguments now and then. Now. But I know when she wakes up the next morning, she probably won't remember if Wait, I was you argue and how old is your mom? A turkey. She's eighty six. She's exactly thirty years older than I am. But she's about to be eighty seven here in the fall. So, you know, we have some help, you know, that comes in. My sister's visiting right now. No, but I thought your sister lived in the same town. Yes, my other sister. Oh. From North Carolina. So she's visiting right now. So I said, I want to come up and see you. And then you, you take a you little drove, pressure. You drove all yeah, yeah. It's just three and a half hours up to Melbourne. And then, you know, I can drive us around everywhere. So, you know, I didn't want she cooks a lot for my mom because she's a great cook. So I said, while I'm there, I'll take us out for every meal. One, you know, let me do my part. Two let my sister have a break. Three, my mother keeps the house at 78. So I can't be in the house very long without being uncomfortable, where I literally cannot breathe. So I don't even stay there. I, I always get a hotel around the corner. Oh, we knew that. I stay in a hotel, which is lovely. And, you know, in Melbourne, I was... Do they know Do they know you when you show up? Because you go to the same I changed. Hotel. This time I stayed at a residence inn. It's always a Marriott property. Um, because they're great and I'm loyal to Marriott and our family is, but this was the residence in. And what I like about it is that it is, um, across the street from a McDonald's. Wow. So before I would always be loyal what to Marriott, I would stay at the, um, what do you eat at McDonald's? Holiday Inn because it was, ne it was next to the Cracker Barrel. Do you get a, kit, a a toy or something? Why do you go to McDonald's? No, McDonald's, I always get the same thing at breakfast. What, oh, breakfast. So I get a, a, a large unsweet iced tea and then I get a, um, sausage McMuffin. So that's my breakfast. I drove through McDonald's about two weeks ago. Yeah. I don't know why. I ordered a double cheeseburger. Oh, cheese, Grant. Remember last I week paid you for ate? That. I paid for that. Remember last week we we had or two weeks ago we had some Chick Fil A. Yeah, that about took you down, brother. Okay, all oh, that just takes me down. You know, um, but you know, but we had some good quality time together. We actually were having a family meeting, and my mom always has Fox News on in the background. Of course, that's kind of her thing. And we were, she stopped at me mid sentence, and she goes, "Something's happening," and it was the moment that. Former President Trump was shot at and was hit on Saturday evening because we were getting ready to go to dinner. It was about 6.15. So then we had to stop the family meeting, put a pause. Was this family meeting for mom? Yeah. We were having some discussion with her about some things that we wanted to uh, address with her. Does every, everybody agree on it, whatever well, the issue is? My siblings do. Uh, some do of it's my call because I'm her health surrogate. Um, but I did have consultation. My other sister was out of town, uh, but she she knew we were going to have this conversation. My mom just needs more help at home, and so we wanted to increase the level of help at home type of thing. So, plus, when she's not looking, I'm going around the house and looking for things that um, will eventually be in my home. I'm that guy. Did you do you mark it on the back? Or no, something? no, because you know my sisters will get something too, but. Uh, what I would like is her piano, because uh, I was the only child that took piano lessons. So I would like the piano that I learned to play music How on big and is read it? music. It's just an upright. It's nothing special, but it's been in our family before her, her before I was born. 
So that's over 55 years. It, so. The one thing you'll have to do is tune it up because I'm sure it has yeah, been... yeah, yeah, I didn't open it because she's got so much stuff piled on top of it <laughs> that I couldn't even open it. But we, it'll need to be moved and tuned. Yeah. We, we laugh about adults, our adults, how, you know, they collect stuff, but we do the same. Oh, no, I'm very much my mother's son. I'm a bit of a of a Go hoarder ahead. as well. Gonna... So my grandmother was a major hoarder. We didn't know it was called that, but she definitely had a hoarding disease. And my mother is somewhere in the middle, and I'm a little bit to the left of that. So it's gotten better each generation, um, but hopefully it has broken... I don't have any children. I hope that it's broken now because, uh, you know, my sisters, neither of them are that way. My nephews are not that way. But, um, you know, she did say to me, though, you look like you've lost some weight. Your mom said that? Yeah. So I said, you know what? We're friends now. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know that my favorite song to play, uh, George, is a song called If. It's a ballad. And it goes like this. I'll sing it, too. It says, if a picture paints a thousand words, then why can I paint you? See, even though I knew that song. That's really great. I was trying to, to get Michael. That's one of the first songs that I learned that wasn't like lesson planning type songs. But I yeah, I was very lucky. My mother. So when I got into high school, I was taking private trumpet lessons. And you know Weren't what you my in the mom band? did? What? Weren't you in the band? I was in the symphony, the jazz band, the marching band. I was in every band available um, because I loved playing my trumpet. So um, my mother wanted me to get some additional trumpet lessons so that I could become first or second chair trumpet. I wasn't great at it. And part of it was I was a little bit lazy. So she bartered. She, this is before we knew about bartering. She bartered piano lessons to a guy who wanted to learn piano in return for me getting trumpet lessons from him. Wow. So my brother Isn't just... That really nice of her? It's beautiful. So, you I know, should probably thank her, but I'm so, an ungrateful bastard of a child. So Mark is a hoarder. His well, mother is a hoarder. A strong my brother is not. Well, his wife is not. The house, Michael's and Susan's house, spotless. Because yes. Susan wouldn't let him be a hoarder. Did but he, he want to be Michael? But he has a trailer in the oh, back well, that is go. mammoth that has <laughs> three of them full in of... The barn. <laughs> it's, I so I will tell you that during, um, <laughs> during my illness, one of the things that my nephew and niece are really awesome at, Taylor and Diana, um, is helping me declutter. So I needed to declutter because, one, I was going to be coming home and needing room room and making sure there were no mold or respiratory or anything. So we were doing all the ducks and everything. But I also don't wear the size clothes that I used to wear. So we need to get rid of everything that was like 2XL, 3XL and bigger. What's your waist now? I wear a, between a 40 and a like a 41. And what was it before? Uh, 56. Hi. Uh, it was a 56. So... Like right now, like these pants. Did you well, dye your hair suit. before? Did I dye my hair? Yeah. No. It, I never dyed my hair. It looks I so, am incredibly vain, but not about my hair. Okay, so let's get back to pick on Michael. Oh, so, so, well, let's. So, so Susan would oh. not let him stuff. So he went and got. Well, you need somebody th to help you with he that. He has three trailers. He has three trailers. Okay. A cargo van, so cargo things. Listen, in the back, he just. At least it's not in the house and it's not bothering her. But, you know, I can tell you that we have to go through periodic sort of cleansings because, uh, you know, I have an issue. So, like right now, today is Amazon Prime Day. So I have to stay away from everything, like my phone. Because I don't need anything, but I love Amazon Prime Days. Uh, so we have two people in the office, Georgia Tate and Michael Miller. They compete on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. And Georgia's buying gifts for Christmas. Yeah. Michael's just buying gifts for today. Well, first of all, Amazon Prime has some great deals on it. So for the office, I bought um, a pencil sharpener because it was 50% off and it was fourteen ninety nine. Now, no one uses a pencil anymore. <laughs> But I bought one. Are you related to Michael? I just think like we probably need it. <laughs> if you look, we probably need it. If you look on Michael's, it's 20 let's cameras. Let's go 
let's let go of some of these things because I've learned to let go of the fact that, you know, I have a tendency to, and, and my issue isn't like garbage. So you like watch those hoarder shows and they live in, in squalor. I, that's not my issue at all. My issue is stuff. So like I went through a phase where, you know, I remembered how much I loved Legos. So the next thing you know, I'm getting the Lego catalog. I'm on the Lego how old were customer. You? Well, it was last year, uh, 55. <laughs> so now I have, I don't know, like 20 boxes of different <laughs> Legos. Do you open them? The Lego no, one? I give them as gifts. But but then when I was telling the doctor about it. Your illness. He it's said, about Legos. But actually, Legos are great for you because of your dexterity issues. One of the things that happened during chemo is that I got neuropathy in my fingertips. And one of the ways that occupational therapists have worked with me when I was in the hospital and then just in general, things that they've given me to do is to do things with my fingertips. So take a bowl full of marbles and move them from one bowl to the other and move them back. So your dexterity and your flexibility. Okay, a bowl but, of cherries. What movie well, is that do from? Whatever, but the Legos are great. Bowl of cherries? What, they're small. Where's that from? What movie? A bowl of cherries? Yeah. Witches of Eastwick. Anybody know the bowl of cherries? Isn't that from First of all, Forrest, it's a Gump? Book. Forrest Gump? Didn't, oh, yeah. Didn't he say a bowl of cherries? Life is like a bowl of cherries. That's right. That's... It is. It is. I Why? love cherries. Do you? And you, and you spit the seed out? When I was growing up during the summer. Mark, you're al we're always growing up. My father loved Bing cherries. B I N G, those red cherries. They have a pit in them. He would buy them every week at the grocery store. My sisters and I were never allowed to eat them because that was his indulgence. Uh. He had things that were like just for Ed. So when I was asking my mother about it, she didn't really remember that because I think it's not an important memory. But, you know, we went to visit him at the cemetery. I teased my mother. So we're just dropping you off. You don't need to get back in the car. So when my father passed there it is. away, Mama said, "Like life is like a oh, box, box of, of chocolate, chocolate. Well, cherries." Alex, you had to ruin it. You've got me becoming a little bit demented. Listen, when my father passed away 18 years ago, my mother had this idea that we should buy a uh, a bench to put in front of, you know, uh, his crypt, where eventually one day she'll be as well. And this so, is the third time you said that in 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> um, so I I said to her, my siblings at the time, you know, were like, how much is that going to cost? I said, well, the piece of land is three grand. And the actual bench is like a thousand, unless you do something ornate. And, you know, between the four of us, it would have been like, you know, $1,400 each. And, and my sister and brother at the time were like, we're not doing that. So I had to be the one to break it to my mother because she wasn't chipping in, by the way. And she goes, well, think of it. You can come here after we're both gone and just sit and, you know, talk with us and whatever. So someone else has now installed a bench right where we would have put it, which is great and convenient. Because now, you know, one, we never have to worry about it again. And B, there's a seat there. Always. Just Always. find out when they're going to be there. It says remembrance on the side. So I sit down while she's, she's talking with my father. My sister's Does he answer? there. Huh? Does he answer? No. Okay. Um, but it's very important to her that she knows that he knows that she visits. And she hadn't been in a while. Speaking because of that, when was the last time you visit? She hadn't. She didn't get to go on Father's Day because my sister didn't take her. And she's not driving anymore, so that was last month. So I made it a point to take everybody up there. And How far we, is it away from the house? From the house, it's probably 15 minutes. It's not far. So we get up there. And so one of the things my father taught me as a kid was um, if you see a heads-up penny, you pick it up. Always. Were you taught that? I do. And whenever I see it. And if it's heads down, you just know what I do. You don't look at it. Know what I do when it's heads down? I flip it over and I leave it right there. But if it's heads up, I put it in my pocket. Right. Why don't you tell them about the heads up at that at the Miller household 40, 50 years ago? Okay. So. Well, can I just finish this? Yes, Michael. Well, you're rude. So that day, 
as I'm walking to the car, I'm checking out of the hotel. It's like 8.45. To drive home. The, right next to my door, there's a heads up penny. No, we were going to the, to the, to the cemetery after church. My mother likes to be dressed up and everything. I put that penny in my pocket. And when we got to the cemetery, I left it there on his urn. The heads up penny. Well, okay, so but why was that penny there next to my car, heads up? Because your dad was trying to talk to you. He's talking to me. I really believe that connectivity. And he's saying it's okay if you accidentally smother your mother. I'm positive that's what he was saying. All right, so we're talking about... I'm glad I said that now. Where it's now in uh, in TV where people can be like, well, what happened to your mother? She got smothered? So, Did, you know, I'm, I'm tw- suspect. So I'm 20, so it's... Give or take them 20, so that we're talking 47 years ago. Yeah. My brother was making fun of me. What's so, new? Yeah. So in our, That is not abated. Yeah. So in the house, there's a big cabinet that I'm chasing my brother around. You know, it's, it's six feet by four feet, so I can never catch him. Yeah, yeah. But my brother, as he was raised, he sees money on the floor. So you got to stop, drop, and roll. He stopped to get it. You went a, right into him. A penny. I went and crushed him into the wall. He's out. Concussion, for sure. Did you break the drywall? So he reaches up. He's looking at me. He's knocked out. That's my penny. He's looking at <laughs> No. He put it in his pocket, that's yeah, for sure. Of course. That's what we're talking I'm about. making fun of him. He gets like this. He's out. He reaches back. Bam! I cut my tongue right down the middle. Oh, God. So we ended up going to the hospital. Both we, of you, a two for one. <laughs> yeah, I had stitches in my tongue. We won't go I mean, into details. That's the challenge. I mean, I had two Just, older brothers growing up, and they they tortured me. I had three older brothers. My my oldest uh, my oldest brother was the toughest um, because he was often left to, to kind of watch over me, and I had to go get my go to the hospital once because I ate a whole thing of comet. What's wrong with that? The cleanser. Well, apparently it's like poisonous. Oh. And so my mother was more upset that I had used it to clean the coffee table. So, of course, it took the finish right off it because it's caustic. Not so much that I had. They weren't sure if I had ingested it, but I had basically a comet mustache. So they had to take me and give me stuff to throw up. Well, I- our mother would feed three. No, I think my mother wanted to just leave me for dead. So yeah, our I mother would the, feed three kids. It was four of us. Oh. If you didn't run, yeah, no, you didn't eat. eat. There was a lot of that. I mean, those stories I think are what oh, test your metal. Kids today are are so pampered and and you know I look at my two of my nephews. And they're what eighteen and fifteen, and they're just so pampered. So spoiled, they don't do chores. You know, one of them sent me a uh, a text today that you know they they go we in a Ala- we in Alaska because we're on this cruise, right? So I wrote back. I said we are in Alaska. He goes, we are. No, he writes back, bruh, because he knows I'm correcting him. So instead, he writes, bruh, like, like you know type of thing like bruh like i know what i know and i'm like you're 15 and you're just the worst acting that way and i tell my sister that all the time i'm like listen you got to get a handle on this and she's like you know it's not worth the fight i was home a couple weeks ago for my other nephew's high school graduation okay it was memorial day weekend so you know i drive up there I hadn't really seen anybody in a while, but the doctor cleared me to go as long as I only stayed one day. Right. He was not happy that I went. And I had to commit to come back and have some shots um, when I came back for my immune system. So, you know, you have to make sacrifices. But I wanted to be there. And he was graduating with honors. And so, you know, I get up there. And, you know, everything's in turmoil and chaos. And everyone's yelling. And nobody's happy. And. I'm just like super chilled out. I'm like, where's my ticket? I'll go over. I'll drive because, you know, I have the big car. And, you know, everybody's fighting. But we go to, I take everybody to dinner after. How much was that? Dinner? How many were there of us? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of us? 
I think it was like 150 bucks. We Where? went to a place called Longhorn. Longhorn's good. Great baked potato, great chili. Right. But my mother got the chili. Chili's great. And so she only ate like, you know, they had eaten dinner. But this was like late dinner because graduation was at like 730. So they had eaten. So, you know, Mary Lou gets the chili. She takes half of it home. I'm sure it's still in her fridge. So, you know. You're going to miss her. I know. I know. This is my coping mechanism. Who are you gonna coping ahead of time. Who are you going to complain about after she's passed? You. You're basically as old and senile. So I am senile. I. What's your name again? Mary Lou. <laughs> oh, my name. So I. Um, Hello, Mary yeah, Lou. I pick up the bill. But, but, but my nephew, I have a, the youngest one. He's 15. He's, you know, he's, he's chunky. He's an eater. So like, you know how they bring the rolls to the table? Great rolls. Well, he eats like six of them. Then his his food comes. He doesn't cut his own food. He's 15. My sister takes his plate and cuts his food for him. So I thought, well, maybe because it's steak and it's hard to cut. Or... The next morning when we went to breakfast, she cuts his pancakes too. Which are really soft. So I said something to her. I go, listen, you gotta, you gotta knock that out. Knock it off. Knock it off. Like, I'm just not having it. She's like, it's, it's a small price to pay. It just keeps the... I go, so the next day, when I'm getting ready to leave, you know, after lunch, because I've got to get home, get these shots, he's sitting next to me now. And he's He needs his food cut. I go, let me explain something to you, boy. You will starve to death before I cut your food. <laughs> and you know that if your father and mother die, I take you. And you move to Miami and you live in my house and you will be dead in a week because I will cut nothing for you. Did you start crying? No, he doesn't cry. He goes, bro, he just ignores me. So, you know, my sister can hear it and she's like, I appreciate what you're trying to do. She says, but, you know, we got this, you know, we're the parents. And I'm like, no, you don't got it, sister. You don't got it. So, you know, this weekend, because they're all And gone. I have that problem, because now I sit next to Michael for dinner. He yes. cuts my food. He has to, because, you know, <laughs> you're like basically a step away from, you know, being on a blender. So I'm like... I wish I would eat out of a blender. So we're at breakfast on Sunday, and I took I, I went out to breakfast with my mother and my, my older sister. And there was a table, a family next to us, and a young girl who was probably like maybe eight. And her parents were cutting her food. And it reminded me. And so I said to my mother, I said, Mother, do you know that Tubby... Is that his name? That's my sister, oh. younger sister. I said, do you know that Tubby cuts Hunter's food? I don't know. I said, I need you to pay attention to that. I said, he's 15. Doesn't cut his own food. Pancakes, steak, sandwich. You know, he's not that far away from going off to college. Uh, 30, he turns 36, 16, 36 months. Well, he turns six, us, because he turns 16 in a couple weeks. So he's, you know, he's that younger, like, age. So, you know, but he's going to be, I think, a, a junior in, in high school. I don't know. Maybe I should just stay out of it. I don't have any children. You have plenty of children. I don't parent anybody. You have plenty of children. You know, you don't answer your phone on, on Father's Day. I know that. I don't. Just in case. You clearly have not spent a lot of time with me in my misspent youth. Oh. There was definitely a lot of opportunities. But uh, but now I think I would love to have, you know, kids with some of these lovely ladies at the chamber. But most of them are like in their 50s or 60s. It's not happening. Oh, okay. Well, Mark. Like we should adopt a couple of kids. I think like, we should. What? Alex, what do you think? Okay. Alex, how old are you? Uh, 25. Oh, you're not really adoptable. Because I feel like Alex can take care of himself. I need somebody that's pretty self-sufficient. Because I I had a lot of help when I was first out of the hospital. If my a, nephew hadn't lived with me. I love that word recovering. Not sick, recovering. Yeah, I think you have to have that mindset. That's really my therapist. My my doctor doesn't allow me to use the C word. Columbus? Christopher Columbus. <laughs> or, no, Columbus. Columbus High School. No, Columbus, Ohio. What a lovely place. Or Cleveland. You know what people are, what, what I love also about Columbus? Everybody's a little bit fat there. Everyone's a little chubby, and they're not uncomfortable with it. 
They're still in line at Buckeye Donuts. And they're getting a long john. You know, they're not uncomfortable. And so when we left Ohio, as we were getting on the plane, I said, I'm going to miss Ohio for the simple reason that everybody who lives here is full. Oh, and they've had a great meal and they're not cranky. They're full. And the C stands for Core Gables Chamber of Commerce. CGCC. We got a lot of C's in our name. Speaking of that, how's the chamber? Got, Chamber's we, we, great. We, we had an awesome we women's lunch today. Who, who spoke? We had a woman named Jessica Broadbent who talked about being in the flow. You know, 60 women coming to lunch. That's great. It was awesome. Really great. And who's your next speaker? Uh, we have an impact seminar tomorrow. Who's speaking? And we've got a panel on uh, how to obtain underwriting from the SBA. So a great panel banker, somebody who's gotten, you know, some money. I think they're a franchise owner. Um, and then we got a great breakfast on Thursday. It's going to be this lights week, you, out. Wait, you got an event tomorrow, we event one today, today one and, who's, and Thursday night, who's speaking Thursday? Thursday is a panel of restaurant uh, folks. This is you our got a annual, big one. This is our annual program that we do with our Welcome Center to support our restaurant community. Yeah, but you have you got six speakers. So we've got Tony Guerra, who owns John Martin's. We've but Tony's got involved with other restaurants, Francesco too. Francesco Bali, who's a partner in Grove Bay, who has all those restaurants. Uh, a chef from Francesco's. We've got uh, Kiko Suarez, who's, you know. He's Kiko. the man. He's the man. And then Paola Mendez, who has uh, a blog. Well, Kiko's, he's a blogger. He's an Instagram. Yeah, but he's more of an influencer. I did a show with him. Yeah, yeah, he's cool. He is Six quite a people, and they're going to cover technology. Uh, they're going to talk about tipping, how that's evolved. They're going to talk about hiring. Oh, wait, tipping. we got to wrap it up. But, yeah, yeah. you know, they, some people, some restaurants add 18%. They're going to talk about that. And it gets confusing because you don't look at the Service bill. Service charge, tip. Yeah. Same thing happens, by the way, with the food delivery services, the Uber Eats and DoorDash and things like that. So it's going to be a great panel. We've got 150 people coming in July to breakfast. I'm giving a, I'm giving a presentation. On what? On the um, state of our welcome center. I haven't really spoken in front of the chamber in more than a year. So That's, th that's Thursday. That's Thursday morning. So I know we got to wrap it up because Michael's here and he's got his, you know, he, Tom McCann's on. He's thinking about, I need one more container. He, you should fill your yard with pods. Those are really stately looking. There are, he ha, there, how long are they, Michael? Long enough. Grant. Yes. First of all, being a hoarder is a disease. Yes. It's a disease. Right. So recognize that, that people who deal with it, including myself, have some type of dis, you know disease that they have to deal with. I have plenty. Comes of in different stages, um, you know. Well, we work through it. So, like my grandmother grew up as a child of the depression, so I think that was the impetus for her hoarding. Depression, depression. Yeah, the Great Depression. Oh, she was born in 1905. Okay, our my mother was born in the 30s, so she went through the war, and you know saw her own mother, and they were poor. And then, you know, I'm kind of the opposite kind of hoarder is that, you know, I save my money and spend it on things. So, our and by the way, I will disclose, I already shopped on Amazon. I waited until 12.05. So I our, have a problem. Our mother's mother, Pauline. Was grandmother. Being, grandmother. Was being, she was moving to Miami. So I was helping her pack in Chicago. Yeah. So she's moving this, moving that, and then she goes to her iron. Yeah, and she hit you upside the head. No, she opens it up, gets a container, pours the water yeah, into sure. the That's container. That's how you make the steam. Wait, no. Pours the water out of the uh, iron, caps it, and brings the water to Miami. Okay. We don't have water here. Right. I mean, part of hoarding, because it is a, a mental disorder, is there's some lack of rationalization. I think there's a point where there's some people that get past the point of no return, and now they're just in a state of crisis. You see those on the TV shows where they're living in squalor. With me, it's like, do I really need one more Lego? And the answer, yes! this, <laughs> the answer this morning was yes. Uh, it's yes. All right, we got to wrap it up, Mark. All right, folks. First of all, I just want to thank everybody who has tuned in the last couple of weeks as we've come back together. I know our format's a little bit different and that it's more just 
kind of talk of the town and conversation, but I hope you find it interesting. Grant and I find each of us incredibly interesting, but we may be the only ones. So in <laughs> due time, we may learn more, but you guys write us nice emails and you reach out and Central, you laugh or Central. you say, hey, thanks for mentioning me. You know, I heard you talked about me. I mean, one of the reasons that I've been at the chamber so long and why I've enjoyed it so much is that it's a very personal gig. You know, you couldn't do that job if you were, you know, not authentic or a bit disconnected. You have to really enjoy people. And I miss people a lot when I was sick. I'm reconnecting with a lot of them. You're I like them in a different way because I saw them exhibit incredible kindness. And so that's my kind of reconfigured, you know, rewired memory of them is that I've seen people really at their very best. And you know what? Miami isn't always that way. I saw the chaos that happened Saturday night, and my poor niece was there and was scared to death. She came home before the game even started because she was frightened. She's going to get her money back from Colorado. And I have to tell you, that's one of the things that we still have to work on. All of us have to be committed to that and work on that. Look, look at you. Oh, I got a picture. Not a wrinkle. You have no wrinkles. Oh, and I, I look like a sh or sharp head. When Peg. the show goes off the air, I'll remove my shirt, as you generally require me to do, and show you where the wrinkles are. Oh, thank you. All right, everybody. Have a great day. See you later. Thanks, Alex. Bye, everybody.